In the book of Judges, we see some subtle types and pictures of Christ. We see Gideon, we see Samson, and a few others. But I definitely wanted to get into Gideon because I love Gideon. I love his story. Don't you? The guy was, he was in fear, he was afraid, and God calls him a warrior. God, and that speaks of how we should be with our kids. We should show confidence, give confidence to our kids. And we mess up in that area, I know. But that's another point of this message is, is to instill courage and confidence in your loved ones. All right, so let's get into how Gideon is a type and a picture of Jesus Christ. And he is. It's amazing when you see it in this story. So this is the Valley of Jezreel right here in Israel, as you would see it today. And Napoleon actually called this valley the perfect battlefield whatever that means. <laughs> he called it the perfect battlefield. And what it is, is it's just got this layout of high ground and space and this perfect amount of space in this valley for a battle. But you know what? Here's the thing. This is called the Valley of Armageddon too. Armageddon, you might say. And this is the Valley of the Final War. There's been many battles in here in Israel's time, but including with Gideon, as we're about to look at. But this is the battle for the final war. And did you know that Jesus can see this valley? He could see it from Nazareth. Perhaps he looked over there and he thought about the future battle that he's going to win, that all these types like Joseph and Moses and Gideon and David all showed a picture of Jesus, but he's the real thing. So it's amazing as we go through this series. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Also, you want to hit the playlist, How to Find Jesus. Click on that, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. You will be blessed by it because there are so many episodes like Joseph's story, Moses, where you're going to see Jesus in the Old Testament. I know you're going to be blessed by it, my friend. Also, check out my book. This is a new book that I'm writing right now, you guys. And it's you could pre-order it right now on Amazon, but it's See Jesus in the Old Testament. And it's just in detail about how you can see him in these ancient books. So exciting, is it not? All right, let's get started. Okay, the Valley of Armageddon. This is where that final battle is going to take place, but it's also in Gideon's story. And there's a picture of the final battle in Gideon's story. So this is what happened in his at nighttime. They they broke the clay jars and the light was surrounding this hundreds of thousands of enemy down below. And they blew the trumpets and they yelled and it made them think there was this huge army surrounding them and they all panicked and they were killing each other. Isn't that genius? God is such the genius <laughs> tactician and warrior. He knows how to defeat anybody in, in any kind of a military situation, or he could just blink his eyes and they're all dead. But he lets us battle it out and use our wit too, and shows us how to use wit and how to use uh, just genius ideas and, and be creative, right? Some of the best, I was an army ranger and in 3rd Ranger Battalion of the 75th Rangers. It's a pretty elite unit. And the things that I noticed later on as a sergeant was that the guys that were creative, if you were creative in how you did things, you were a lot better off. Not just the left brain, read the book, do it by the book, but using some creativity and some wit and some common sense. Those are the big ones right there. And just, you know what it was really is loving your team, loving your team members, loving the brother next to you. If you did that, you take care of your men, the mission will take care of itself. That's what an old first sergeant told me, First Sergeant Lane. He was a legendary uh, ranger, tough guy, um, and he taught me that, and I'll never, ever forget it. <laughs> All right, let's get into Gideon's story. Gideon's story is awesome, is it not? So this is what we're going to see in the future of the story. But here they're blowing the shofar, which was the trumpet, right? It was the ram's horn. And here's the torches. And this is the speaking of the battle that he's going to win. So Judges 6 says this. So the spirit of the Lord covered Gideon like clothing. Is that not awesome? The spirit of God covered Gideon. Lord, fill me with your spirit as I pray every morning. And I hope you do too. But in the Old Testament, he would cover them. He was upon them. And here it says that the Spirit of the Lord covered Gideon like clothing. And it's awesome because Jesus said that we are clothed 
in his righteousness, right? We're clothed in his righteousness. So that's a, a picture of Christ and what he does for us right there in Gideon's story. So here we are, where there's the battle that's coming, right? And Gideon, they're going to blow the trumpet. So in the book of Judges, it also says it speaks of Jesus' work and his role as the ultimate judge and deliverer. Because the book of Judges is about all these different judges, like Samson, Deborah, and Gideon. And they're all leaders, okay? And what it's showing is that it speaks of Jesus' ultimate, ultimate rule as judge uh, in the future. And that's what we're seeing in this book mostly. So it's it's good stuff. A lot of it's a little, it's more subtle, you could say, but it's there. So in the book of Judges, the promise of a future savior, right? That's what we see in it. Who would deliver God's people from sin and restore them to righteousness? That's the main theme of the book of judges. So it's good stuff. So the coming Messiah is seen in the repeated pattern of God raising up judges to rescue his people. That's what we're going to see in this. So it's, it's it's beautiful. So these judges served as saviors, basically. Each one of them, Samson, Gideon, Deborah, they served as saviors. But Jesus would be the ultimate and eternal savior who would bring salvation to all who would believe in him. That speaks to you and, and it speaks to me, you guys. All who would put their trust and their faith. Faith is just trusting, really, in Jesus Christ, the ultimate judge, right? That's who he is. All right, so Gideon, he was a type of Christ, was he not? It's so awesome that we're going through this right now. So Judges 6 says this, Gideon was beating out the wheat in the wine press in order to save it from the Midianites. Because what was going on, guys? The Midianites were coming in. They were evil. They were like the Hamas that we saw on October 7th. And they would come in, they would steal all the food. They would wait till harvest and they would steal all the food that these Israelis, that these, the people of, of the Hebrew people of God's people were preparing. And they'd come in and they would steal it all. So Gideon here, he's, he's kind of hiding. He's at this wine press and he's, and he's grinding up the wheat there, separating the wheat and get, grinding it to powder there, uh, to save it from the Midianites, to hide it from them so they don't come and rip it off. And that's what they were doing. Those evil guys. That's what they were about. So Judges six says this too. It says, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, valiant warrior. <laughs> so this could be, by the way, this could be what's called a, uh, a pre-incarnate uh, uh, Christ of the Lord. When you see the capital, I know this is all capital right here, but when you see the capital L-O-R-D, like Lord or angel of the capital L-O-R-D, that speaks of Jesus a lot of times. So the angel of the Lord capitals could be the pre-incarnate G, the Lord Jesus Christ coming and visiting with people. He visited with Abraham. He was with Jacob, right? Uh, face to face with Moses. We see a lot of that. The pre-incarnate uh, Jesus Christ. Or I think there's another name for it that uh, that many use. And it's, it's kind of a biblical term for it. But though that's what it means. So it, incarnate means flesh, right? Like meat, like carne asada. Carnate is the word for flesh. So he's there appearing to them pre-flesh before he was born of Mary. So it could be one of those with Gideon. There's a lot of evidence that points to that because if you watch this, um, you'll see it here in a bit. So, but now the Lord has abandoned us and has handed us over to Midian, he says to this, this angel of the Lord. So that's what he's saying to him. And the Lord looked at him. So here it says, and the Lord looked at him and said, now there's some evidence right there, you guys, that this was an actual visit of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, a pre-incarnate visit of the Lord. So, and the Lord looked at him and said, go in the strength of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Have I not sent you? The Lord's like, hey, haven't I sent you? You're going to do it. <laughs> Have faith, my friend. And the Lord looked at him and said, go in the strength of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Haven't I? I just read that, but I want to read it again. Why not? Have I not sent you? The Lord 
That's the Lord speaking to Gideon. That's awesome, you guys. Don't you love that? But he said to him, oh, Lord. So he's calling him Lord again. So there are pre-incarnate visits of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. He says, oh, Lord, how am I to save Israel? Behold, I am... Uh, behold, my family is the least in Manasseh, the tribe of Manasseh, right? And I am the youngest in my father's house. So he's of actually the tribe of Joseph. Remember, Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Manasseh is one of the sons of Joseph. And they had two tribes. So what they called it was the house of Joseph. And remember, Joshua, who was also a type and picture of Jesus Christ, right? He was of the tribe of Ephraim, also of the house of Joseph. So there's a lot of um, in biblical and uh, rabbinical teachings, there's a lot of talk about this Messiah, son of Joseph. Messiah, son of Joseph. There's a lot of that in their writings. They were expecting this Messiah who was of the lineage of Joseph. And there's evidence that Mary, by the way, had, if you look at her genealogy, she has the bloodline of Joseph's tribe as well as Judah. So it just fulfills all prophecy. If you read Genesis chapter 49, you will see that the the, the prophecies of both Judah and Joseph speak of the Messiah. It's amazing stuff, guys. Amazing, amazing stuff. I love it, don't you? <laughs> Good stuff. So let's get back into the presentation. Yet the Lord said to him, to Gideon, I will certainly be with you and you will defeat Midian as one Man, does that not point to Jesus Christ? You will defeat the enemies, right? God's enemies as one man. I think that speaks of Jesus. He was the one man who did it on the cross, defeated the enemies of God on the cross. So foreshadows, this all foreshadows Jesus Christ, who would become the mighty Savior, even though he was born in humility, just like we see Gideon as born in humility also. He was the least, he said, of the tribes of Manasseh. So Judges 6 continues, then all the Midianites, the Amalekites and the people of the east assembled together and they crossed over and camped into the valley of Jezreel, Armageddon, right? So there's a picture of what Jesus is going to do in the future where he defeats all of God's uh, enemies in the battle of Armageddon, in this Jezreel Valley, right? Isn't that amazing? So here's a picture of it, you guys, and I'll show you the full presentation on it so you can see all of it. But you can see it's this vast, vast valley that Jesus could look at from Nazareth. Um, it's this vast valley, which is the perfect place for a, a large, large battle of multi-countries. And that's what we're going to see in the future, my friend. Pretty amazing stuff. So Gideon gathered 32,000 Israelites to fight the huge Midianite army of 135,000 men. And the Lord commanded Gideon to reduce his army to only 300 men. Gideon must have been like, whoa, oy vey, Lord, what are you doing? I can't, I need this big army, right? No, he doesn't because he has the Lord on his side. And he has him reduce that army down to 300 men. Remember, they went down to the creek and, and he watched, God had him watch how they drank water. Those that were down in like the push-up position, drinking the water uh, were eliminated, not eliminated, but they were set aside as not being selected for this army. But the ones who took a knee, they crouched down, they brought the water up to their mouth to drink. Those are the ones God told them to pick. And it was 300 men. That's an interesting number because when I was in the U.S. Army Rangers, the 75th Rangers, I remember we worked with the Delta Force guys. And back then they had three squadrons. They had Alpha, Bravo, Charlie Squadron. And Delta Force has a lot of support, like a lot of those kinds of units, right? But there were 300 real operators, the actual operators, the guys that did the door kicking and the shooting, the most highly trained guys, they were a number, they numbered 300. I think that's interesting that that number was still there. And, I, and remember Abraham as well. Abraham, what, had like 318 men go and, and do that special operations type battle where he rescued Lot. So that's what we see there. So it continues. So Gideon and his small army, they surrounded, this is what happened. They surrounded the Midianite camp 
at night and broke the clay jars, exposing the light of the torches inside of them. And they blew trumpets and yelled. So the army thought they were surrounded is what happened, you guys. Pretty amazing stuff, right? So here's that Jezreel Valley, what it looks like in the daytime. So here's what it would look like at night, right? And they were all camped down here in this vast, this huge valley that 135,000 troops down there camped out. And suddenly what happens? Gideon, at the signal, the, the Gideon's men, those 300 men break the clay jars, right? There's fire, there's torches, there's fire inside of the clay jars. It looked like they were surrounded down here. And they blew the trumpets and they yelled and screamed. And these guys down here, uh, the, the enemies of God were down there and they panicked and they turned their swords against each other as Gideon's army rushed in and they defeated the armies that were against God, against Israel. Amazing stuff. So Judges 6 continues. So the spirit of the Lord covered Gideon like clothing. I just wanted to end it with that because the spirit of the Lord covered Gideon like clothing. I love that, don't you? That's beautiful, you guys. So God covers you with his spirit. Not only that, but that that was the Old Testament. In the New Testament, God actually indwells you from the inside out. When you're born again of God, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, there's the, the spirit works from within, from inside out of your, from your heart, and, he, and it wells out like a spring of living water upwelling out of your heart. That's how God changes you and me. When I was born again, that's what it felt like. I felt God's rushing warm, his love rushing in from the inside out, and I felt clean, and I felt free and new as a new creature. And you could experience that too, my friend. And, and here in a minute, I'm going to give you an opportunity to Give your life to Jesus Christ. He came down from heaven. God the Son came down from heaven, humbled himself, just like we see with Gideon. He was born in a manger with animals. He was born of the virgin, of a virgin, Miriam, Mary, who was of the tribe of Judah and Joseph. And Joseph, his stepfather, his you know stepdad, was there wrapping him in, in clean cloth, just like Joseph of Arimathea, Jesus' death, wrapped Jesus' dead body in clean cloth. And Joseph, he was there to, when Jesus was born, he held his body as he was born. He burst out of the womb, right, that was untouched by human hands, by dead men. At the same, in that same way, Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' dead body and wrapped it in cloth and put him in the tomb, not the womb, but the tomb that was never defiled by dead man. And what happened? Three days later, Jesus burst out of that tomb and he's alive. And he's alive today, my friend. And he died on that cross and he shed his blood for you. Before that, he died on that cross. He did that because he loves you and he loves me. He did that out of love, my friend. And if you would like to receive Jesus Christ right now as your Lord and Savior, if you're not sure if you're saved, if you've, you don't feel like you don't know for sure you've been born again, you can do this right now, my friend. You could say this simple prayer from your heart to God. It's business between you and God. Would you like to do that? If that speaks to your heart, open your heart right now and say this prayer after me from your heart to God. Ready? Repeat these words after me. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he shed his blood for me. I also believe that in three days he was raised from the dead and he's alive today. I choose to follow him as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my friend. If you prayed that, heaven rejoices right now. All of heaven, the Bible says, rejoices over one who repents. That means turn around. You're turning from your sinful ways and you're turning to God. Isn't that amazing? So, hey, God bless you, my friend. Don't forget, hit this playlist right here. How to find Jesus in the Old Testament. You will be blessed by it. So click on this playlist right here.